Oh, fuck. That woke me the fuck up. I was going to take a little nap before we started, but here we go. Blast into my headphones. It is time for episode four of the Dead Cell FPV Drone Podcast. I am your host. Oh, we're doing it again. Okay, another take. All right, your turn. You do a take. I wasn't done with mine yet, but all right. I didn't even see that fucking episode I just number. Keep hitting the button. Jesus Christ. Episode four. Episode four. Quattro. Already. For our Hispanic uh, friends. Yeah. This shit's amazing. Th- fear. How do you say it in German? Fear. Fear for our, our German friends. And it's episode four. Episode uh, four. Um, who gives a shit about FPV? <laughs> Whatever we're going to call it. Who ca- yeah, who cares about <laughs> who FPV? Who fucking cares about FPV? Not a lot do you of care? people. Do you care? Uh, do I care about it? Um, I care yeah. about... Um, being able to have fun flying a drone around. Here we go. So, um, did you do that this week? Oh yeah, absolutely. Today, Sick. how'd that go? Uh, wait, hold on. Yesterday I did not because it was like rainy. Today I did. I met up. Specimen was coming, came through Ohio. Nice. But it was so windy that it was just a little bit of a pain to fly. But did you meet up with them today though? Yeah, yeah. We flew like a couple Sick. packs to the abandoned stadium and then. Just, I took him to a parking lot when he came here. <laughs> really? I didn't try very hard. We just took him to a parking lot in Delaware. It was fun, what? though. I just took him to the spot that I always fly. So, whatever. It was uh, definitely better than, um, like, a parking lot. So. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it was. That's cool. I like how he's traveling around, seeing people and shit. Doing his FPV thing through different countries or counties. But I'm not going to lie. I've been flying parking lots like there's this office park that doesn't really have much. It has like a parking garage that I barely fly because issue zero penetration. And then um, there's and I would have to position myself in order to do everything that I want to do in the line. I have to position myself in a weird way and I'm not always parked and standing in that spot. But there's a big parking lot and then there's just like one gap. But there's a lot of trees and stuff. And honestly, that's like the most fun I have flying. Through trees? Well, just like this parking lot for some reason. No, oh, okay. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I mean, I'm sure it's it's not the most fun, but it's I still have fun doing it. Yeah, so. that's, that's and that's the name of the game, isn't it? Just having fun flying your drones, not worrying about the bullshit. Yeah, and don't don't knock the parking lots. No, nah, you nah, can have fun in never. a parking lot. I've had a lot of fun in a lot of parking cro- lots across the country. Yeah, imagine all the poor S bang. F- uh, pilots out there who have to just fly in the middle of cornfields. All the Idaho pilots. Yeah. Or what's corn? Iowa, Idaho. I get Idaho. Idaho. Everywhere. Let's go Idaho. Yeah. There's corn everywhere. Yeah. Corn is corn is like most of the crops. I'm pretty sure. I don't know anything about agricultural. Indiana pilots are Spang champions. Mm-hmm. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Cool. Good start. It's a fucking strong start on episode number four, bro. Here <laughs> we else? go. Thanks Hell for subscribing. Yeah. Thanks for subscribing, everybody. We're on iTunes now, too. Oh, yeah, we're on iTunes and Spotify now. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't want you to listen to it. He wants you to watch the video. So subscribe to the YouTube. We're trying to get to, uh, hey, UAV Futures is playing Valheim. Steam just told me that. That's that's something I needed to know in my life. So I'm glad I have those fucking notifications turned on. Um, subscribe to your YouTube. We're trying to get to 1,000 subs. If we can get to 1,000 subs, then what are we going to do? We'll celebrate in some way. We'll, we'll- do... Um, what will we do? Us, us, artificial sacrifice, or a, a, what? a sacrifice of some kind. Okay, I don't know whatever what? that means. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll stab a lipo in my house. Oh wow! Make sure I you won't. film it. I won't do that. I won't do that in my home. Fuck that. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> We'll, uh, I don't know. We'll think of something. Maybe we'll make some merch and we'll give some away or something if we get to a thousand subscribers. How about that? Yeah, or um, we'll do like a. I don't know, like a live episode in Philadelphia or something. Oh, I like a live episode. That sounds sick. Yeah. Okay. So if we get to a thousand subscribers, we'll do a live episode. So make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow us on iTunes and Spotify because we're not quitting this for the foreseeable future. You're going to have to deal with this podcast for a while. Yeah. Until um, we start as long as you watch it. Yeah, exactly. And then once we make enough money, we're going to, we're going to take all the money and we're going to mm-hmm. go to um, somewhere. That you can't know. Great. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> this is going fantastic. <laughs> I used the stupid fucking Zoro some more. 
speaking of weeks in FPV, yeah. I flew I flew a specimen myself. Specimen came down here. And uh, here's the thing. I figured out the trick to the Zorro to getting the gimbals tighter. It's not like a normal thing where you just tighten the screw a whole bunch and it gets tighter. No, no, no. You can go past it and then it gets loose again. So you got to fucking tighten it a little bit and jiggle it and tighten a little bit and jiggle it. And then you can finally get it to where it's like pretty fucking tight and nice. Shout out to Windchill. Big shout out to Windchill FPV. He tuned my radio for me. He did my, he tuned my gimbals. So now it actually, it feels pretty fucking nice. Nicer than I thought the Zorro could feel. But it's, it's all because you can't just turn the screw a bunch. You have to turn it a little bit and then keep testing it and find the sweet spot to where it's like stiffer and shit, which is fucking dumb. Very unintuitive. So there, there's screws in the back and the front, I'm pretty sure. The front is for the throw. You know, okay. It makes the stick deflection shorter yes, or longer. And then the back is for um, how loose and tight the gimbal feel, but gimbal feels but then also the retention or the springiness mm-hmm. i'm sorry the springiness so you have actual like kind of hard to move and then springiness which also makes it a little tough to or um can adjust how, how hard it is to move it's it's i still want my tango 2 i'm still figuring out tango 2 stuff okay. in fact i think my next video is going to be my uh my misadventures in radios it's going to be like what radios for you you know what radio should you pick or some shit like that and i'm going to talk a um, bunch of shit on like tx16 and then I don't know, whatever else. Don't pick, don't buy any FR Sky radios in 2023. Never, ever. You're, you're fucking dumb if you do that. I hate you, and don't ever talk to me if you buy FR Sky in 2023. If you're brand new to FPV and you don't know shit about it, and you happen to buy an FR Sky radio, you should fucking quit. Yeah, just quit right now. No, that sounds so pretentious. Uh, For those of you that don't know, at first, guys, just really old school, and they fucking haven't updated much, and the range sucks. You're much better off running ELRS, Crossfire, or um, Tracer, or what else is even left? Uh, Ghost, I guess. Yeah, something just not fr sky don't get fr sky it's bullshit well i don't know they, phantom phantom has that little handheld fr sky but he runs tracer on it or ghost on it or something like that well we so, gotta have, have the radio it itself fucking... is not important honestly mm. like the radio itself well the, phys- the physical radio is not has to feel good it has to feel good yeah, in yeah. Hands. that's important but i'm saying from like uh like most radios basically have the same software in them Mm-hmm. It's just okay. a matter of which one you think feels the best. That's true. Yeah, they got Edge TX or Open TX or whatever. Yeah. So that's all the fucking same. But then the protocol, yeah. FR Sky, ELRS, Crossfire, that's different. That matters. But yeah, the actual radio, whatever, as long as it feels good in your hands and you can run a good protocol on it. And a good yeah, protocol a... is not FR Sky. Yeah. But if you're going to buy a radio, also, I would recommend getting a Radio Master or like a. Um, like a boxer or a Tyrannus or not a Tyrannus, but it was the, the TX-16. I mean, if fuck, you like save it. it. Let me save it for my video. Jesus yeah. Christ. You're just giving the whole plot away here. But no, no, well, no. Um, it is different. Whereas gamepad versus uh, airplane radio, yeah. old school, like boxy ones, you know, some, some guys like to hold a fucking, you know, a whole like giant ass bot, like, like just go out and like have to carry this. And then, I don't know. I used to. Well, I like it. my Mamba for long range. I, I love having my big Mamba for long range. I just put I just put this giant chunk on the back of the Zorro now, and it's like whatever. But I do have a TX16 that I don't use because I don't like it. It's too big, yeah, and it's I don't too, care for them. It's too hard to carry around, and but I bought it because I was like, oh, this is the radio I should get. Yeah, I was yeah. really close to getting a Mambo. A Mamba, because the first radio I bought was like a QX TX Tyrannus thing or whatever, mm-hmm. and I broke the USB cable on it somehow. I'm putting a bad USB in cool. it. Pretty cool. So there's no USB access, and then I wanted to practice simulator, so I was like, well, I got to get a new radio. So I got the TX16, and then I was like, this thing is big, and I had to go to Tampa, so I was like, I'll just buy a, a radio, a Zorro, and that's what I've been using ever since. Use that for like six is that months. Zorro? No, you yeah. like it. Wait, you're using the Zorro? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything before that was basically just me practice, like not really flying at the level that I'm flying at now. So Right, right. Now you're getting kind of locked into the gear you like and what you need to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good phase for sure. Yeah, if you just pick something. I mean, if you just honestly, if you just pick something at the beginning and it works, just keep it. Unless it's like just like really low quality, you're not going to keep it. And don't get the DJI control link. That's fucking bullshit. 
you get no range. If you lose video, you automatically lose control link. So you can't yeah. even fly it back line of sight or anything. Like just stay away from the DJI control link at all costs. Yeah. It's tempting because you may think yeah. it all works together, but it's bullshit. You're much better off getting something proven. Yeah. ELRS is proven. ELS is pretty damn good. Or cross Pretty damn good. Uh, I'm speaking of proven, you know, ELRS is kind of beta and there are hiccups now and then, although the 3.0 is pretty solid, the the stable one. Um, but Crossfire has been around forever. So people use for long range for the longest time. Definitely a good system as well. Um, so should we talk about caring about FPV if we're going to name that the title so people don't get all mad that we yeah. clickbaited them? And just jump right into it. We're 10 minutes in. We may as well. We also just stay tuned. We got voicemails at the end of this and shit, too. We're going to we got a whole bunch of new little stuff for you. But um. Yeah, who cares? Who cares about FPV? Who gives a shit about FPV is the subject of today's video. I've, I'm just like, it's been around. I've been in it for seven years. It's been around since when? Like 2013, 14, 15? Because I got in pretty much early into the freestyle aspect of it, you know? Like when the first DRL happened, when Rotor Riot started and shit. Well, a little after it started. But um, I don't know, let's say like 2014 maybe is mm -hmm. when fpv as we know it really started getting going so like eight years ago nine years ago um lots happened a lot has fucking changed we've had you know we started off with zmr 250s and blackout frames or whatever shitty fucking motors now we have like pretty damn good components we have a lot a lot of specific freestyle components you know what i mean whereas we just had quadcopter parts back then but now we have frames and motors meant for certain things for like the sub genres of uh, fpv it's no longer just like flying around like you gotta dive some gaps and do some crazy shit to fucking uh, impress people so a lot of people have dropped out you know what i mean a lot of people i know that have been flying forever they just stop flying and shit they stop caring about it but what, what is the future with remote id do people care about just straight flight videos anymore or do, do we need more content in fpv do we need more um engaging content you know what i mean we need to see more than just like, oh, here's another video of somebody flying around in a park for fucking four and a half minutes straight. What honestly, do you think? What do you think? Honestly, I think what I like is I like the fact that guys like Potato Jet are into FPV mm -hmm. because they have a wider, broader audience and they're able to introduce it to people. Now, is that uh, is that a good thing? <laughs> I think to I think somewhat it's a good thing. It just depends on what the the method is i guess i mean i don't really watch the, his content i know I, I met him at uh briefly at at rampage but um i've looked up some of his videos and he's been doing like a lot of um fpv stuff mm -hmm. so and typically he just does like he did like camera stuff right so i think that's kind of cool you have a couple other of those camera guys doing the fpv stuff um but whenever you have those those guys that do like that are like videographers and photographer influencers start doing FPV. Somehow they always get caught in like the rotor riot uh, net, mm -hmm. which is like, well, whatever it's well, whatever. Theory, yeah. Cause, cause rotor riot has to leech off other people to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, there's like a, they, they, but they also have like the market share of like brand recognition for people yeah. for like, you know what I mean? So they're the um, YouTubers. Yeah, so I think like if somebody who may know something about YouTube or know how to like, you know, work the algorithm could one day, you know, do something greater than them, you know, that would be uh, cool. a Peter Shreepool of FPV or something. Yeah, or like, you know, like a, a Grim Ripper or something like that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> one day. Gotcha, so, gotcha. High aspirations. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really not because most of like what people fail to realize is that a lot of this stuff is just a product of um, building followings online right nowadays. So if you can build a following, you can start a brand and then become like a well-known household name in like a certain community. So that's sort of the, I think, a, and I'd be a positive thing for the community to have uh, a non um i don't really have beef with rotor riot like you do because i don't really have the experience with them but i just yeah, i would rather have a team yeah i would rather have a company that's like mostly representative of the 
of the thing that I'm into not be mm-hmm. owned by like a defense contractor. Yeah, yeah, yeah no shit. <laughs> uh, that's the one thing that, I, you know what I mean? It'd be cool to have like a more independent mm-hmm. uh, type of, you know, organization, but it is what it is. And I don't really, I don't really care too much. It doesn't affect me. So. Gotcha. I decided the hobby is great, man. It's in a lot of good for a lot of people. So I just hate to see people like taking advantage of that, you know? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know how, like, I don't know what their, what, what their thing is and what they're all about. Um, it's just, a, it's, they, they had a potential from what I can tell, cause I'm fairly new to this. They had the potential to become like a, um, sort of like the, I don't really know how to explain it. Um, they could have been like the, the more like tame version of jackass for, for <laughs> FEV, you know what I mean? Like CKY. Yeah. 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 So well, obviously of, um, uh, scams in FPV, the great lunchbox FPV tragedy. Did you ever hear about that? No. So lunchbox FPV was this dude in the community. He had a little brand. It was like a tiny kid friendly brand, whatever lunchbox FPV. And they made these little like lunch boxes that had a built-in monitor and charging station and they stored your whoop and your batteries. Like mm-hmm. super fucking cool. Really neat idea. <clears throat> and he made some prototypes and showed them off at events and shit. And then he put up a GoFundMe for pre-orders and sold thousands and thousands of dollars worth of them. Tiny whoop brand, tiny whoop ordered, you know, like 50 kits right off the bat or whatever. And then he just did not fucking deliver shit. I think maybe like five people got units and they were broken. And then nobody else that ordered one got one. He did no refunds. Um, kind of like responded to a few messages and in public and shit. And then just radio silence. Then just dipped out of FPV with all the fucking money. That was like the the most the mm. blatant scam in FPV that I've seen. That's so fucked up. That's Super a good idea though. Fucked up. It was a great idea. I yeah. want to take that idea. That's why he pre-sold a shit ton of them. <laughs> or that's why he got a you know the Kickstarter did so well. Because you can and get fucking cut and ran. You could probably get a good amount of like uh, analog monitors for pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, that's yeah. all. That's old tech. Yeah. So, I mean, HD zero monitors are expensive. It's like 200 bucks, but that's if you buy it new, mm-hmm. like that one that's on the Emacs, which is like yeah, the I only get, one. That's what I use. There's yeah. another, I think there's, I, I want to say somebody made a standalone, but it's like 200 fucking something dollars, but I might be wrong about that. But I thought I saw a standalone monitor. I mean, you can order if you, you could probably order those. I mean, if you were like quick, you could mm-hmm. set up an agreement with um, Divi math and get those chips and then build what you need and it would be yeah, cheaper so that's a lot of work yeah and you but you would have to have an infrastructure for that and like a system you know like how uh fox here has that vtx now yeah 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 yeah. so like which was carl that was hd zero's thing he was like i'm not a manufacturer man i just like made this shit so yeah. y'all make the and nobody would so he just started doing it but now yes. it's hd zero is growing pretty damn well and uh, you see other companies making shit and they announced i think a v2 uh freestyle vtx is going to come out as well can't wait. Hopefully the penetration is a little better. I mean, penetration on the 90 FPS is not terrible. I was just going to ask, are you using the 90 cam? Yeah, yeah. But there's still it's still like not always. But I know what I'm trading for. Right. You know right. what I mean? I, I know what no I'm trading latency. for. Yeah, I'm trading. I just, but well, you're coming from DJI, right? I was going to say, I've never felt yeah. limited by HD0 where I wasn't by analog. HD0 analog get the same penetration in, in my book. I think analog's a little bit better. Just a just marginally, a little bit better, but it breaks up before HD zero will. You know what I mean? That's the thing is like analog will go so far, get a little shitty, little shitty. HD zero holds onto the signal, but then it's just gone when it goes. Yeah. You know, then it's real bad. Yeah, I think that there's a. Um, I I was gonna do on my video, but I got lazy. I was gonna put uh, on my other quad. I was gonna put an analog receiver on it, mm-hmm. or transmitter on it, and I was or what receiver, transmitter. Yeah, yeah on the same quad. Yeah. No, I imagine that just oh, okay. no, another quad, say. on the other quad and I was going to mm. test it to see how it was, but I didn't want to do all that because, you know, that's not really the kind of channel that I'd operate. I'm not like a fucking science <laughs> testing channel. So that's you go to, bar- to, go to Barbell for that. Barbell has probably has that. Video. <coughs> I have the, um, actually speaking of HG, I got the, the Wi-Fi module today that came in the mail. Oh, I got to get one of those. It's pretty uh, cool looking. It's just, uh, I haven't fucking played with it at all. It's RTS and RTSP, whatever it is. But also, like, we were talking about the monitors. I don't really need a monitor. 
if I want, I can just do HDMI to a monitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I have that ability if I need it. And I just, I have this little camera monitor here actually that I can output to, that I do output to sometimes. And it's like, yeah, make a little just, thing like that. I just have to have an HDMI cable come out of my goggles, which that's yeah, all you whatever. need. Yeah, I got one. Um, I have like yeah, a little monitor for my camera. I use sometimes I just plug my goggles into it. It recognizes it right away. What I want to plug do into is, your computer it recognizes it. I want to get an even smaller monitor and attach it to my head. Like a really. So you looking one. to stand behind you and watch? Yeah, that's like the. Have you seen the Power Play? The Immersion RC Power yeah, Play. Those, yeah, I've seen those. That's what I was going. I loved my fucking Power Play, bro. I was so excited when that came. I gave it Mr. Steel like. I don't know, a couple years ago, he's like, "Hey, do you still have one of those? I want one." And I was like, "Yeah, you can just have mine." Like, I wasn't using it, but I'm like, "Fuck!" I kind of, even though I would never use it, like, kind of want that just to put on my shelf because it was a cool item. I do, I do kind of like it. Uh, I did see someone using it at um, at some whoop race once, uh, which is a really cool idea that they have the monitor built into it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish there was more stuff like that that you could get, but it's so limited. Like all that type of stuff is just limited. Well, the um, <clears throat> the power play had a second use for analog video nerds. It apparently is the perfect device to plug your old VHS camera into to record onto an SD card and then transfer because the quality oh, really? of the video is like super good. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's um, if you look up these old like analog fucking camera forums, they recommend the power play to record to transfer it to digital. Um, what was the original uh, like? system for fpv like how did they get the vtx do you know what do you mean like, how, like so i i heard it was like security cameras transmitted but what was the transmission system that they used oh, i don't even know like ttl or some shit is that a thing i don't know i know that's, that's a word i know they use old security cameras analog security cameras on the drones and then they would um i don't just don't know how they transmitted it i, I looked oh, into for vtx kind of i mean you yeah. can make your own vtx that shit ain't that hard. I just, well, I just want to know what the original, like, because it when it was first started, somebody used something that already existed. Right. And what was the tr wireless transmission system that they are they used that already existed is what I, I want to know. I don't know. I'll we'll have to ask even more of an OG. Yeah. Bardwell. He has, like, the first FEV video on YouTube or something. What? No, it's not true. He has a really old one. He, has a, he was in it, like, building drones. Oh, no, are, like, yeah, he definitely was, but <clears throat> he, he doesn't have the first FEV video. That's... um. Flight test had that shit, I think. Okay. No, there's fucking all fucking shit. I'm not sure if flight test has it, but there's definitely way older shit than that. I wonder who uh, that's the very first one. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I would, I'm interested. I mean, Trappy was flying FPV wings before drones were ever even a thing. You know what I mean? Like, he had them fucking ski goggles with little video monitors taped to them. That's actually, if you want to actually find out the first use of FPV, even outside of a drone, I would look at Trappy's old school fucking shit. Um, okay. It's... Let me see if I can find that. Have you ever seen that picture? What is see it? If I can... I'm going to see if I find it. Uh, just... <clears throat> Trappy's fucking FPV setup back in the day. He has ski goggles on with little fucking video monitors attached. Here it is. Let me... Uh... There's a couple photos of it. Yeah, here, I'll send you a link to it so you can see it. <clears throat> I don't know if we can put it on screen. I might be able to. I might not. Let me mark it. If oh, oh, people are gonna... somebody somebody turned it into a GIF, so I'm just gonna go ahead and send you the fucking GIF version here. Here, it's in the messages. You can click on it. <clears throat> yeah, oh, we're like editing. Yeah, that's that's the old school. That's the old school fucking FUV goggles. Uh, it looks like he has a little receiver on the side of his head there. I don't see no antenna coming out of it. Maybe that was just, this is a posed photo. Look at that, uh, that radio module though. The fucking big old antenna. I wonder what that, uh, how he's transmitting though. That's just what I want to know. If you're listening to the audio of this, if you haven't seen the picture of Trappy, it's like just some ski, some motocross goggles, some ski goggles. And it has two like video screens, hot glued to the front of it on either side, like pretty cyberpunk looking. Uh, 20 seconds in, I will edit this 20 seconds in to 24 seconds and then I'll put that in there. Hopefully I remember that. Should I clap? Yeah. Oh, fuck, I dropped my microphone. Yeah. Well, so I don't, yeah. Cause I don't rewatch or listen to this podcast at all. I do uh, like third, maybe 40 minutes max. Maybe oh, we should really? you go that far. 
Yeah, because I'll be I'll play video games and I'll just put it on my third monitor. I have three monitors, so I'll oh just, good. Well, I'll I, play battle I, bits and listen to the fucking podcast. I should I should probably do that, but I don't because I just I, don't. And I then mean, <laughs> speaking of who cares about FPV, do you watch your videos after you post them? Do I? Yeah. Uh, not um, I watch them so much when I'm editing them. I don't put, watch them after I post them. Yeah. But um, I'll go back and watch them later, like months or weeks, uh, to see what I did like especially like if it's a video did well mm-hmm. I want to see why and then I'm like I don't know why this did well and I still don't know I still can't figure it out mm-hmm. can never figure it out um I don't watch my shots post them and move I mean because I got weekly uploads too so I just post it and move on yeah I mean sometimes I do and sometimes I like I don't but I mean I'm I'm <clears> almost I'm about I'm about doing weekly now so if I can get one post edited um this will come out next Tuesday, so when this comes out, I will wait. Oh, fuck, I don't know how time works. It's Tuesday, June twentieth. <laughs> okay, so when this comes out, that mean that means last Saturday I didn't upload a video, but next Saturday, Ju- July first, I got a new video coming out, probably about my radio. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, my next video is going to be about remote ID, and I'm pretty sure it'll be out by the time this gets out. So, cool. It'd be a week from now because we're on a Tuesday yeah. schedule. All new episodes of Dead Cell drop on Tuesday, no matter what, even if we're recording Monday night, whatever. But we yeah. try to record on Tuesday and drop on Tuesday. So new episode, uh, if, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, wait, I don't know. We're recording a new episode today, maybe. So listen yeah. next Tuesday. Yep. So Tuesday is the day. Someone asked about that. Well, I was saying that I don't listen to the podcast. It's it's just, you know, I, I lived it, you know, but I'll see mm-hmm. comments pop up and I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about, what these people are talking about. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if we kind of just ramble off on like alternate timeline tangents for thirty minutes and then forget about it, they're like, like oh, "What yeah, is I this?" To- <laughs> they're like, "I totally agree." When you were talking about the, and I was like, "I don't know. I didn't fucking know what I said." Like, sometimes I'm like concerned. I'm like, "Did I say something that's like bad?" Because I got to be careful. I, when I used to drink a lot in live stream, I used to have to think about that. Like, shit, did I say anything fucking stupid? Like, I don't usually be saying dumb, problematic shit, but. Every now and then, I'd be like, uh, was that cool last night? Like, go off on anything too much? Like, nah. Now that I'm sober, though, everything I say, I mean, I'm going to no regrets. No regrets, bro. No regrets. Yellow. I mean, I mean everything I say, unless I don't, which is rare. Uh, Okay, so this is a part in the show where I feel like we could play voicemails. Yeah, you want to not talk about the future of FPV anymore because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about? Let's do some voicemails. These these voicemails are the future of FPV, okay? Okay, sick. Let's listen to some future up and coming rippers. So I don't know who any of this is. These people, mm-hmm. I don't know who these are. Like I just wrote BM one and after I downloaded them. Um oh, but there's actually the third one, I'm just gonna say somebody called twice because I forgot to say their name, but I okay. still didn't know what they said. So <laughs> um Alrighty. Sorry. All right, so voicemail one. Okay. <coughs> Yo, it's super deluxe. This message ain't for you guys. This message is for the FAA. Well, all righty then. Oh, sorry. Good <laughs> message. Good message. Yo, one more super time. deluxe. This message ain't for you guys. This message is for the FAA. Come pry my fucking drone out of my cold, dead fingers, bitch. What? <laughs> all right. Super deluxe. What's up, bro? <laughs> so what do we got to... I don't know what to say to that. Uh, we have to call. We have to comment something on it. I'm going to comment. Uh, I like the spirit. I like the spirit. Non-compliance, like we said in the last episode, is going to be the way forward. So, I appreciate your spirit, Super Deluxe. Yeah, good job. Good job, Congra- buddy. Congratulations on that voicemail, and I support you. Made it. I support it. All you right. Made it onto the show. Yeah. So remember, we have a voicemail. Uh, I think people What's have the forgotten. Uh, I oh, will boy. play the second one and I'll look it up as we're playing it. So All right. it's not dead air. <laughs> Let's hear that thing. Oh, rip. Hey, this is a message for um, the Dead Cell podcast. It's us. Uh, I was checking out your show today and uh, you're talking about gimbals. Mm-hmm. I so was. I left a, lot. a comment on the YouTube there. But yeah, get a cool. Storm 32 gimbal. Um, they're cheap and they work good. I've put them on a lot of my FPV builds, mostly cars. 
and uh yeah i don't know super fun storm 32 and, uh, yeah I don't know, that's all i got for you bye cool appreciate the uh i'm looking at them right now so appreciate the um the tip i can't find them what's Are the those camera was he talking about camera gimbals uh he's talking about sticks nice talking about sticks for radio oh, i'm using like duck duck go or some stupid shit so fucking nothing's coming up it's all right storm. storm 32 gimbals Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to look them up, but I feel like uh No, these are these are like camera gimbals, I'm pretty sure. Uh yeah, yeah. there's a yeah, yeah this I don't is, know. Th- no, there yeah, I found it. It's a that's a three axis like camera gimbal. All right. Well, well what we were talking about is the gimbals on the radio sticks. I got uh, yeah, I see what's happening now. All right. So that's why I don't like the name gimbal on the radio sticks. What else confusing. Are you call it? Uh stick um movers great what's the phone number <laughs> <laughs> oh i forgot to look it up okay well, it's I, didn't, three, I didn't forget it's, okay <laughs> go ahead 319-343-6625 if you want to call and leave a voicemail it's wait is this it it says no calls on my thing that's not the phone number why does it say no calls i think you just gave like another vo- uh google voice number that's not the right number. See, this is okay. We got to talk about this after the show. There was two, two dead cell goot YouTubes for some fucking reason or some shit. We'll figure this out later. Um, play the next voicemail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So the, the, the voice, the number is three, one, nine, three, four, three, six, six, two, five. That's what I just said. Yeah. There's no calls, but there's voicemails. What the, f- how the I fuck don't... do you leave a voicemail without calling? I don't know, man. That's Google magic. Because there's no phone for it to call, I guess. So it just goes straight to voicemail. Jesus Christ. Okay. If you're like not on, it's fine. We got it. <laughs> we got this. All I right. don't have any voicemails. I just logged in. Oh, there's a bunch of voicemails. Okay. Next. Okay. So, so this is uh this one's a uh, this one's number three. Hey, what's up, Bot Grinder? What's, what's up? What's up, Grim Ripper? Hello. Uh, my question. Are as follows. What's up Multiple. with Nest Motors? Uh, I saw Fly High FTV's Instagram post about their contract for sending you free motors for review. Stuff like say only positive things, and then also about how not durable they are. Seeing a lot of stuff about them just breaking, like not being Unibel dense, bad stuff. Um, but check your Insta DMs for your Radio Master module. I sent you some messages on your Tango. Uh, the Radio Master module on your Tango. Why not use an XT30 extension? That way you could pocket the LiPo and not forget to unplug it. And then you'll uh, have to pocket long range. Anyway, those are my questions. Love the podcast. Good so. All right. Thank you very much for the uh, voicemail. Um, start backwards. Um, that's a great suggestion for my power solution. I long range with a Mamba, though. I have a Mamba with Gorilla Link that does two watts. So that's fine for long range. I just like... Um, I, the issue was with my um, Tango 2. I need to use the LRS. And what was the other thing? The MEPS motors, the MEPS, the MEPS motors. Yeah, I only I don't know too much about this shit here, but apparently uh, MEPS motors are really bad. They're pieces of shit and they break easy and they're not Unibel as claimed. And um, the company is doing some like paid review bullshit, just like Hovonix and a few other companies have been doing like paid Amazon review where, hey, we'll sponsor you. But here, we'll send you like one set of the product and you have to give us a good review and make a video and do all this bull. Basically, just sending you product to make a review and making you promise that you'll do a good review. Uh, I don't know the specifics of the MEPS thing, but I've heard a few people call them out recently. So that, that's uh, all I know about. I'm not on Facebook, so I didn't see the Fly High post. I just heard some people talking about it. Should we I try don't to know. Reach out to <clears throat> Should we reach out to MEPS? And try to and then see if we can catch them and catch them. Well, I mean, I just let's let's see if that we're journalists. We ain't trying to catch nobody. We just, you know, get the information and report it as we get it. So I, I'm down. Yeah, let's just try to reach out to Meps and ask if they're willing to uh, make a comment on record for the Dead Cell podcast. Let's do for that. Sure. Write that down so we don't forget. I'll write that down on something. I have a whiteboard. I'll write it right here. What am I writing? Um, Meps. Meps. Oh, Meps. We could put that in the next episode. And then, um, yeah. Tune in next episode for the conclusion of the MEPS thing. Maybe this can turn into an investigative report. Maybe we can talk to Fly High too. Let's do that. And this could well. become a documentary. Yeah. About the about the the seedy underbelly of FPV motors. All right, I'll hit up Fly High. You hit up MEPS, and we'll see what's going on. 
Okay. CD underbelly of FPV motors. I mean, there's like three factories cranking out every fucking motor you buy, and they're all right next to each other and share employees. So be careful. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's that was one, a warning. They're going to warn us. Uh, yeah, I mean, those motors. I wonder what's wrong with them. They're Maybe just I'll saying buy, that they're not that great. Just buy the, I should just buy them and fly them. Maybe that's this is all part of their genius marketing. <laughs> so people would be like, I want to see how bad they are. So they buy some. I've yeah. never ran them. Obviously, I run the Bach Rander motors because they're the best. Didn't you I try not to say video? they're the best, but they are. Did you post a video where you were using some other motors? Yeah, so that quad that crashed into the swamp, like everything mm -hmm. fried. And then I had a bind and fly for review, that Fox ear. So I basically just undid the motors and the stack, and I transferred that entire gut to that quad into a new Demibot frame. That's that was right. easier than soldering up four motors, just unscrewing shit and fucking scooting it all over. But then I broke one of those motors of the uh, the bind and fly. So I just I got Bach Rinder motors on it now. Remember I'm when back. I used to fly the Bach Rinder motors? And you used to break them all the time? Yeah. What do you what do you I, fly now? I have some uh P some Hyper Train P D V X P Do you break them all the time? Uh no. I haven't broken a single one. But now you say you're a better pilot and you were flying mine when you were learning, so way to fucking make me look bad. So the 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 motors should be um should work for new new people. What does that mean? People look up to you for their for uh for for great products. <laughs> I try to make great products. I'm I don't kidding, know how you I'm fucking kidding, broke so you. goddamn many. It's because well <laughs> I haven't broken is, one in forever. I'm gonna, I'm going to be honest. I think a lot of the times when anything that I have breaks a frame, a motor, it's always a result of um, accidental disarm mm. uh, from high, high altitudes. So well, like they aren't designed to take that. Exactly. And so, but other times they were direct impact into um, things, which makes sense. Oh, gosh. I have a phone up. Hey, I'm recording. What's up? Inactivity okay, cool. alarm. Wait, wait. Inactivity alarm. All right, sorry, I'm back. Inactivity alarm. What the fuck is it? Oh, that's you. God damn it! <laughs> I was. I thought it was my headphones. I forgot you did the fucking soundboard. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Uh, let's just leave that in there. I didn't take that. Yeah, long. that's why I had to. I had but to. Let me. I, when I make my products, what I try to make is like the most durable for the cost. You know what I mean? So I feel. How yeah. much did you pay for those motors? Too much. Yeah, mine are 20 bucks fucking each. Yeah. I feel like that's a damn good price for what they are. You can get five motors for 100 bucks, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm, but like I, th I, I think that the T motor makes the hyper train motors, and I feel like T motor makes. They make good motors. They, they make really good motors, but I can get T motor pacers for $23. Yeah, you can get the motor that these yeah. are based on and $5 added to for fucking 20 something bucks, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly, yeah. The, but the, the, P Pedevic, who is that guy? He, I saw, which is crazy because I bought those motors at Rampage because I needed motors, mm -hmm. which I didn't even really get to use them just because I was um, fucking around. Masturbating. Oh, yeah, I was jerking off, and you know, I just didn't have time. And then it started raining. Those porta potties smell good. I've heard. I don't blame you. Um, P, do you know who P D E V X is? Oh yeah, he's a ripper, man. He's a fucking yeah. ripper. They're his motors, and they're yeah, really good. Nice. And um, yeah, well, I don't funny. think he would make no bullshit. When and I was I talking know, shit, I was talking about his. His are probably good. The rest of them can suck it. Well, the thing is, is that even the hypertrain motors that are made by Rotor Riot, it's not like um, Rotor Riot is manufacturing them. They have T motor manufacture them. Yeah, yeah, they're just fucking rebrands. But although I'm sure PD, if they're his mo brand motor, I'm sure he had some say into what stator yeah, size yeah. And, and all that he wanted. You know, and I like them because they're 2306, which mm. I love flying 2306. It is a bit smoother than 2207. I like that um, fucking. I need my veep, veep, veep. I need my fucking punch, though. Oh, that 22. You know what I mean? Somehow I don't. I don't know. Somehow I'm like, I got it. Um, And then I like that. And then they're like a weird. I like the 1950, but these are like 1985 KV. So they're I just mean, like, 20, 85 and 90 are the same thing. You can have a 0.5 difference and it's the same in my mind. I, no, they're, and I'm sure and yeah, factually, too. Yeah, they're 1985. The is the same as 1980, right? But or 19, 1980, yeah. But they're 19. Um, I was flying 1950s. Not that it's like that much of a difference, but it's different than 1750. 
Which so when I when I go to make motors in seventeen fifty or eighteen hundred, I can choose either one because it's the same fucking thing. If you put it on a bench and do you know a bunch of testing, no, no, it's not. But but, right, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying yeah. that like fifty yeah, during in the matter. KV, not one fucking. You will not feel it at all. You will not feel a fucking if difference. That's make, just like, eh. I'll buy your motors if you do nineteen fifty on the next ones. I like the seventeen fifty though. I, I like that punch, man. I need I need to have that fucking torque. When I fuck up on a dive, to be able to pull up real quick. Yeah, but 1950 doesn't then give you more because you got a higher KV. 1750. Okay, it spools yeah. up it's faster. The higher, the bigger uh, the number, the slower it spools up. Oh, uh, but but ultimately it has higher uh, RPM. Yeah. And the only reason I did that, I went to 19 was because I switched props to a 4.9, and I mm-hmm. noticed that I was like hitting the ground when I was trying to punch out, mm-hmm. and so someone's like, "Well, try to increase your KV," and I did, and then I also inc- changed the motor size completely, and it was fine. Now I don't even know what size props I'm using half the time. Just like sometimes it's 5.1, sometimes it's 4.9. I don't know. It's, notice a difference anymore. I don't know what size. Oh fuck! I put too much vape juice in here. Um, I don't know what size my shit is, but um, for my props, I just, I go by feel for props. Right now I like the mangoes though. The mangoes are feeling good. They're fast. They're faster than the juicies. I'm kind of just like hauling ass around everywhere I go. Yeah, I uh, I um have some juicy props I was using and um. I actually have, at some point, I'm supposed to get some uh, some gem fan props. And I, nice. they're going to be, um, there are these ones that I saw that were, uh, what the fuck even, I don't even remember what they are, but they kind of look like the the HQ ethics props. They kind of look like the ethics props. So I want to try mm-hmm. them. I don't remember what they're called though. So, I don't know. To me, I don't, I don't, I, I can't really tell sometimes with the props i just don't know if i can really tell i can that's one thing i'm very picky about is the prop my gimbals and my props i'm very picky about everything else i'm kind of like whatever I mean, like I if i'm have... really trying to go for it i can fly anything i feel like you know what i mean i can make anything mm-hmm. fucking do little flips and stuff but if i'm trying to concentrate and like dive a tight gap or do a series of tricks real precisely like i'm very picky about my shit yeah i i uh i have some i think i have some juicies on my quad right now but I like go between those and the um, Hurricane 5.1s. Mm-hmm. I've, I've heard of that. I don't know if I've ever flown the Hurricanes. I hurricanes, hurricanes are basically like almost feel and shaped almost very similar to the Juicy Props. They're a little different, but they're pretty close. And I don't know if they're what the pitch is or any of that shit. So all that stuff is like, I don't really bother to learn too much about it. I mean, I know like the higher the pitch, the less efficient but the faster it jumps up but then the lower the pitch the more efficient but it doesn't it's not as fast i think like the more flat it is i don't know someone will correct me i'll let someone correct me yeah somebody correct you i'm gonna see if anybody has um that post i want to know more about the meps thing right now (laughs) oh yeah do you have facebook do I have Facebook? Unfortunately, yeah. I don't really like using it. No, I don't. I don't miss if anybody in the Discord has it, and we can come back to that, but I wanted to know and see if we can find more. Um, circling back to the, uh, does anybody care about FPV anymore? It seems like there is a lot a lot more new people getting into it. There's a lot of new products coming out. Shit's fucking going pretty strong. But mm-hmm. like remote ID might scare away a lot of people. I feel like once, you know, okay, so say you just watch like, I can't really tell you what Bardwell's take is or anything on it. Is he planning on like telling people to not comply and shit? Or are they still trying to go in the system? I'm not sure. But basically, uh, like if you, I was going to say, if you watch YouTubers that are like trying to go within the system, you might get kind of scared off of FPV. You're like, well, shit, I got to register and do all this and that. You know what I mean? That's why I want people to be like, oh, I'm not going to fucking comply. Because new people, then they see this, screen and be like, oh, okay, so you don't really have to do all this bullshit. It's kind of like skateboarding or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I, mean, I was going to say, you don't really have to wear a helmet at the park, but you should. So I don't, I don't, fucking example. I don't want to get in any sort of like conflict and like sort of like conference beef or anything like that just because it's like I don't want to deal with it because I don't care. But uh, I know that so, that he did say something about your position on remote ID. Oh, I'm sure. Everybody's on his, on his live stream. On. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't heard it, but I don't really care. So, yeah, it was not a big it was a uh, non-compliance. Um, and the argument was that what happens when you're, how long can you go? What happens when you're non-compliant? Is the FAA just going to eventually give up? 
Um, but I think the position is that like if every if nobody complied with a law with a rule, how would they enforce it? Yeah, they can't arrest everybody. It's like a power in numbers thing. It's right. that's how protests work. Yeah, they're just going to kind of not do anything about it, like so many other kind of bullshit yeah. arbitrary laws in in the world. Like nobody does visual line of sight. It's just going to be on. Nobody registers their drones. That's one nobody thing. Yeah, <clears throat> you like in case you don't know, you only have to you only have to fit remote ID on drones that you register. So if you don't, if you already don't register with the FAA, if you already don't register your drones, you're already not complying. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's who have you been in trouble for that? Has anybody been in trouble for not registering their drone besides people get it popped for something else and they add that on top of it? You know what I mean? So if you already don't register, then don't worry about remote ID. Oh, speaking of this, okay, so this is something I want to bring up. Somebody posted something um, in that episode. I don't know if I can find it, if I can, whatever, but somebody said that the FAA can fine you based on their own findings. Um, so basically everything we were saying as far as like don't talk or whatever is kind of irrelevant. Like don't answer questions and stuff, which I don't know if that's if I'm, I 100% think that's necessarily true. Wait, if what? Okay, hold so on. I'll explain it. Hold on. All right. Uh, it said, oh, what did they say? Okay. So you know how I went on that rant where I was like, don't tell anybody, ask for a lawyer, you know, mm -hmm. it's amendment, you know, use your right, your constitutional rights. Well, somebody said that the way that the same way that, um, other organizations, like, let's say, uh, the one that is like labor, uh, the way that they would OSHA, the way that OSHA would find a business, they can FAA can just find you, and then you would have to go to an appeals court later. So essentially, they they can just be like, "Oh, we found this information about you. We're going to find you now." Instead of like doing like a court court process, right, right, right. But I still think that they would still need some evidence to be able to do that. Yeah, you need. On and video. if you give them that evidence. You know what I mean? So I still think mm -hmm. there's still like a bit that you can like avoid um, saying. Yeah. I mean, obviously just don't say anything and still get a lawyer. There's it's such a gray area law. That means it's full yeah. of loopholes. Lawyers are going to have field days with these fucking cases. You know what I mean? Oh, here, here's what he says. He says, as I understand though, the FAA can fine you up to $50,000 and they don't have a burden of proof like they would in a criminal or civil case. It's the same kind of fine they hit a business with oh you replied to it the same kind of fine they hit businesses with for not complying with osha or other government regulations it's neither criminal nor civil they just hit you with the fine based on their own findings it can be appealed up up to an appeals court eventually though um i would imagine though it's kind of like the i don't know how they're going to how they can get away with that i mean without ooh, real proof yeah, the, I mean, they, they tried to charge a guy in Texas who was a journalist. He got away with it, you know, argued in court. The Texas judge threw the case out. Even here in Philly, Philly Drone Life, the FAA had a yeah. proposed $180,000 fine. That never ended up transpiring. Gonna <clears throat> Nothing what's really going to happen is, sorry, because so, what's going to happen is, what I would assume is, they're going to fine you. And then you're going to say, I'm not paying this. I'm not paying this. And then they're just going to take you to court. Mm -hmm. And then you have your court case. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's the same thing with the IRS. Like they can, the IRS has the right to just charge you whatever the fuck they want to charge you or whatever. And if you don't pay it, they're going to take you to court. Yeah. I mean, they have the right to get your lawyer. Yeah, exactly. So like there's, there's a level in which there, um, and the FAA, I would assume the FAA finding you is, is a lot more difficult than the IRS. Cause like the, there's no like mechanism in place to collect those to like collect on it's like harder for them because they don't it's not like the faa is structured like the government the government is very much like structured to do very specific things in mm -hmm. very specific departments there's like a lot of like things that they can do and can't do they have forms and like they got to fill out these specific forms to do xyz and like what for like they i don't know if they would even have the system in place to be like oh how do we actually collect this money now if right. they're not you know what i mean like what what do we do how do we enforce this um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And are, are I'm you sure going they do to, at some point? Are they going to find people for not using remote ID before remote IDs are even available to the public? You know what yeah. I mean? Before a standard one is even out there. I mean, there is one, but I don't know if they're like readily available. 
Um, what if you can't? Yeah. What if? What if they're all sold out online? What if you can't get one and you have like a gig the next day? What do you do in that case? <clears throat> if you physically can't buy one, if you make your best effort to go online and try to buy one, you can't get one. But your livelihood is filming gig work, and you have to go to work the next day. What do you What do you do in that case? Yeah, I don't know. I just think that um, there's so many loopholes. There's gonna be so much bullshit with this. <laughs> it's, it's, just, court, it's, it's the court. It's gonna go to court. Like, I can't wait. I'm gonna pitch in on somebody's legal fees. I got fuck. I got I got 200 bucks on it. I got 200 bucks on your legal fees. Anybody, if you're listening to this and you go to court for not using remote ID, hit me up. I got you for you, an hour. I'll tell you what. This is this is my half of the idea. This channel. If this this a dead cell channel gets monetized, we'll pick. We'll we'll give some money. Start a, I've been saying I want to start a legal defense fund yeah. for people that are are going to not comply. But you can't do a GoFundMe for court shit. I think Kyle Rittenhouse was like the last person that ever did it. And they were like, oh, nah, you can't be doing this now. But <laughs> not, <laughs> but we can definitely just like we can take funds and, you know, put put it towards uh, legal defense for people. I think that's a good idea. Dude, I don't know. Uh, um, damn. Damn. Well, we could just, you could always just give people money. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Yeah, you can just ask. Are there, loopholes, know, fucking... for, are there loopholes for doing GoFundMes for court funds? Um, I don't know. There's I'm not sure. Be. There's a lot of tax shit, too. I found the Met, the post, um, <clears throat> by the way, for, for um, Fly High. Oh, you did? Yeah, and they doxed him. It, it's even worse than I remembered. They doxed the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that? It's on Facebook? Here, I'll send you the link. It's on his Instagram. There's like a video and shit, but I, I wasn't playing it. Here, I'll send you the link in the chat right now. But um, so basically, here's what he says. Um, Monica Meps, I guess that's the rep there, personally attacking me and posting my address publicly. Yeah, yeah, they look, they're fucking pissed. Uh, they made a video claiming that they're actually uni bells, but they're not. I really don't understand how these bullies think they can push us around a lot of our faces. A good company controls the narrative by releasing products that are good quality. A shitty company tries to control the narrative with thug practices and everyone can see what's happening in plain sight, a.k.a. you don't get to know. <laughs> Will affiliate marketing whores overpower truth? Only you decide with your wallets, uh, according to Fly High FTD. That his post. Um, what is his post on Facebook? This is on Instagram. I sent you a link in the chat right there. Oh. Did you see the first link? Oh, yeah, because you saw the trappy thing. It's above that. Oh, um, okay. <clears throat> so there, there's some shit going down and Meps doxed. That's fucking crazy. The craziest thing is like 15 people that like the Meps post attacking Fly High. <clears throat> he says he's extremely disappointed with the product he received. That, God damn it. I can't get this video to fucking stop playing. Here, maybe I can screenshot it or something. How do you fucking... Oh, God damn it. He's screenshotting this piece of shit. I don't know. I was going to read that, but I can't get the thing stopping. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's fucking crazy shit right here. There's Dude, no there... goddamn print screen button on here either. Oh, oh my gosh, it's insane. It says black. What? They're showing like T-Motor motors or something in this post. Oh, man, this is insane. I went to the Monica Meps. Oh, her Instagram. Yeah. What? What's what? Uh, <laughs> I just see there's like a post here of like a, a T motor motor that's all crushed. And it says once again, I don't want to read all this. It's a big wall of text. Uh, but this is insane. What, are they just talking shit? I don't know. I, uh, I'll send you the link so like I don't have to, don't have to deal <laughs> with it. <laughs> it's not my. Uh... There you go. <laughs> All right, let me see. What is it like a whole ass thing? Yeah, it's like. Oh something. wow! Oh, this is just this isn't uh, for the fly thing. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, okay. So it's once again. I would like to reiterate though. I would like to reiterate that those who come to my end with a small account, <laughs> with a small account, intentionally blackmail will be removed from the block. After all, fly. She's talking about fly high here. Fly yeah. dot 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 has also removed our response. The intention is to guide public opinion, but I have no choice but to do so. On my end, unlike other brands, we choose some personal and send a large number of motors. We are sending motors on a large scale for trial use. Our product prices are quality and very good. 
We are the best among the same level. Thank you also for comparing us with T-Motor. Of course, among our large number of trial personnel, there are skilled ones as well as average ones. Some oh, who can uh, muters, some who can use motors, <laughs> and others who intentionally come to blackmail us. <laughs> what the fuck? You have to Do remember you dare... <laughs> you have to remember that this person speaks Chinese and is trying to translate into English. So like Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're using words that we would never use. So but this Jesus. is funny. This is fucking pretty nuts drama right here. Well it's 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 just it's insane. It's funny because the the translation makes it look so terrible, right? But like if you kind of read in there, it's like it seems like they're trying to say that like our motors are high quality. Um, blackmail, I don't know, is the word that they that we would use. They're probably saying like, I don't know, blackmail is like a weird word to use. Um, Do you think this is actually this lady Monica going off, or just another employee running this account? Uh, I don't even know if there's a real person named Monica. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't know that. This you know is just I mean? some sweaty balding guy responding, all pissed off. Like there's like they they have like a like a photo of. I mean, she has like. Um, They're arguing woman. over what a uni bell is, basically. Okay. That's the uh, yeah. long and skinny here. Because the fuck unibells ain't that great. Whoever told you unibells are the end all, we just wanted to see if they have an affiliate link in that fucking video, man. I swear to God, unibells are not the end all. You can make a super strong motor with a rail uh with a bell and a fucking ring you just have to use a lot of glue on that ring and not make it super big like an old school motor there are ways to make fantastic motors i have has have any of you separated a ring from a grinder v4 let me know in the comments below have any of you separated a fucking ring i never have not on one fucking motor so i don't know i don't know what the fucking problem with unibell versus ring and bell is i've never separated a I've never separated it, but I have definitely broken shafts. Yeah, the shaft will, that's the thing is that motherfucker will break the shaft before it even gets the, before it'll separate the ring off the bell. Because I yeah. tell them use a whole lot of glue on that shit. Just fucking, I'm gonna just put a whole bunch of glue. Don't let it come off for shit. Make the shaft break first. Why not? But you also, Unibel? why why do you in the bell? So you don't have to put a bunch of glue. It's more stu it's structur more structurally sound if there's not if you have one piece of metal. Like if Is it's it one cast piece of like, yeah, it's just, that's, that's science. I like mean, it seems you... like if you have a, a ring on a bell, if you hit where the ring is and shit, you have two little layers of metal because the bell sits, in, so the ring sits inside there. What ring? That's more structurally sound. The ring is the top part. Instead of a yeah. uni bell, you have a ring and a bell. Yeah, but if you, the thing is, if you have, if it's like with anything, it's like one piece, no matter what it is, any sort of um, hardware. If it's one piece, it's going to be stronger than two pieces together. Like, I mean, that. in certain instances, we're talking about denting and shit, though. It's not going to be stronger in cases of dents, maybe oh, crushing. Dense. But we're talking about you denting your bell in to where it won't spin right because it's hitting the magnet. You know what I mean? In oh, that case, a okay, uni okay, bell okay, is not stronger. Well, um... In that yeah, case, there's... you want some thick... You want a thick ring and a thick fucking bell. There are good uni bells out there. I'm not saying uni bells suck. T -motor, all. They're good. T -motors I'm just are making T motor. Let me see that thing. Hold that thing up to the camera. Let's see what that bad boy looks like. That's not a uni bell. That motherfucker just popped off. Oh, it is. Because it's focusing. There we go. Yeah, see? I can see it. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, Did that break? Or you just unscrew it? Did it break? No, it's just scratched. Um, well, there's no motor. That's just the bell. Oh no, yeah, this is just the this is the bell. I took the, the I burnt yeah, so I burnt the actual like motor out on one of them so i did break one i guess i've just burnt the motor because it dented because it's a uni bell no because oh. because i the prop was like bent and i flew it too far like really yeah, far. Happen. Just, yep. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that sometimes it happens sometimes it don't so i roll the so, dice so i was flying and it beats like, walking though i always like when someone's like your drone's smoking <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck it <laughs> let, me, let me land i don't want to walk 20 feet i'll fly it over yeah, exactly. Uh, so I had to go grab it, and that's a, that happened too with another one. Uh, now, Emacs are split bells, and they dent like crazy, but they're also made of fucking really soft metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, to make them light, you don't want a light motor for freestyle. It can those, it can weigh a few grams. I feel like those motors are really good for um, just park flying. 
Like if you're just cruising. Yeah. Like the Eco great. twos, the Eco yeah. twos, they come on every Vine and Fly review, and they're good motors for cruising around for sure. Yeah. I just as I thought as I wanted cheap. to buy them. The only reason I bought them is because they're cheaper. And it's like, well, I'm gonna break motors anyway. But since I have like bought expensive motors and don't break them, I'm like, oh well, damn. I'm just gonna buy expensive motors now. But not from not hypertrain. If they were, I wish they would not be twenty seven dollars. I would buy them. Like <laughs> I like them so much. It's so much for a fucking motor. I know, it's dude. Too fucking much for a motor. I know it's so insane. I like no way. Jesus Christ! Especially for a freestyle. I've turned the lights to blue. That means we're getting towards the end of the episode. Is that like is that a new thing? No, oh, that's what I end. just I just made up. Yeah. Um, did we talk about what we we're talking? Who cares about FPV? I care about FPV. I have a lot of fun doing it. It's it, it literally helped me get off of fucking pills and shit and find a purpose in life. So I'm all about FPV, and I'm sad that the FA is trying to make it harder for people because there are many stories like mine. You know? Do you care yeah. about FPV? Yeah, FPV kind of helped me get through a breakup, sort of. So yeah, see, it's it's, it's there for a lot of people. I, yeah, I don't sure. watch as many flight videos as I used to, but I, I like your videos. I like how you vlog and talk about stuff I like Spider Sugar's adventures, you know, to on his trips and shit. I like watching Kmart FPV. I like watching Dan Z's flights just because they're unique and have good music and stuff. So I do watch some flights, not as many as I used to, but I'm also just kind of sick of like your average four minute flight video with boring music, you know, like fly faster, use some quick music. If you care about that sort of thing, if you just like uploading for fun, of course, you know, do you boo boo, but. I, you know, if you're trying to get views and trying to get people trying to stand out above the rest, trying to stand out above the sea of pilots, fucking, you know, be, be more flashier, be more interesting. Yeah. T- take a shirt off or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking dumb it out, son. Do like a, do Let's like see a that dick. Yeah, do, yeah, exactly. Get, get some, <laughs> get out there. We did um, boner cast again. As hard as we try to get away from being, doing, being a boner cast, I don't want to be pigeonholed. You know, I wanted this to be all things RC, not just a boner cast, but it always comes back to that. So there's one thing I want to mention that I, I feel like is really important that has nothing to do with FPV, but it's very important. So apparently in 2003, Kanye West made a, um, a, a pilot for a TV show on mm-hmm. HBO oh my and it got gosh. leaked. It got leaked and I watched it today. How was that? It was like it had potential. Like it definitely had some potential. It was a little weird at times, but there were definitely like if it was polished, it could have been good. Wow. Um, it had JB Smoove in it from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Nice. I don't know who that and, is, but I'll pretend. Uh, you don't know? Have you seen Curb? Nah, I'm aware yeah. of it. Um, so anyway, so uh, yeah, it was definitely interesting to see Kanye West not absolutely insane. And like, <laughs> Graduation was good. He had, he, yeah, before he went nuts, good. he was good, man. People forget that shit. He wasn't Our always dude. fucking loco. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Who knows? Who gives a fuck? That's yeah. the end of the podcast or what? Uh, Telemetry you... lost.